Owning a property in Nigeria is good investment. The thought of owning one can be quite satisfying and to an extent could give you a sense of security. However, this reality could be shattered if you get scammed. If you are dreaming of owning a property in Nigeria, there are things to know in order to avoid being scammed. The idea is not in any way out of place. It is a great thing and even greater if you've decided to make it a reality. In all you do, don't ever rush the process of acquiring your desired property. Don't allow sentiment and excitement to cloud your judgment. Now on the show today, our focus will be on how to secure genuine properties in Nigeria. Welcome to Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonia. The former Minister of Trade and Investment, Dr. Olusegwa Ganga, has appealed to President Bola Tinubu to declare the industrial sector a national priority and back it with plans, policies, and finances. Aganga, who delivered a lecture at the third Adio Law Jutala Lecture and Presidential Luncheon, said industry multiplies national wealth, creates jobs, and is critical for exchange rate and balance of payment management. Details in this report. Captains of industries, organized private sector, the United Nations Industrial Organization, UNIDO, and the federal government, among others, have converged on this hall. The key theme here is setting the agenda for competitive manufacturing under the AFCFTA, what Nigeria needs to know. Otumba Francis Meshuye is the president of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MEN. He hits the ground running by lamenting the slow rate of industrialization in Nigeria and the challenges affecting the performance of manufacturers. Other speakers believe that the AFCFTA can be achieved if stakeholders address the challenges affecting the nations. We need to develop the right strategies and concerted efforts to position our economy as the number one manufacturing hub of the African economy. Evidences from several parts of the world, including China, United States, Japan, Germany, South Korea, have shown the importance of manufacturing sector in building a resilient economy. The FCSCA is not just an agreement. It is a platform for collaboration, even beyond the walls of Nigeria. How do we reach for regional integration that will give us competitive manufacturing? Nigeria must actively engage in regional and continental cooperation with the following steps. The steps that will bolster regional integration, we must strengthen our commitment to regional integration by harmonizing trade and manufacturing policies with other AFCFTA state parties. This is why we have continued to prioritize the critical infrastructure and the implementation of policies and strategies aimed at improving the ease of doing business and strengthening the productive capacity of MSMEs across all sectors. The former Minister of Trade and Investment, Dr. Lushegwa Ganga, takes to the stage. He is of the opinion that embracing competitive manufacturing under the AFCFTA is crucial for Nigeria's economic growth and integration into the global market. He says Nigeria may not be able to compete with China now, but it can be a hub in Africa by investing in infrastructure, innovation, and skilled labor while addressing trade barriers. It is important to make it absolutely clear from the outset that in modern global economy, industrial development is not luck. Industrial development does not happen by accident. It is a nation's choice. Countries must therefore have an intentional, precise, and intense approach to nurturing and expanding industrial activities. In all, the experts say to become a prosperous nation with a strong Naira and reclaim its position as a jewel of Africa. Nigeria must industrialize.
All right, welcome back from that report. Research will help you verify that the other party is true. Working with someone you don't trust is going to turn out to be disastrous. You want to do your due diligence and know that you can trust them before you do business for the people you're getting properties from. Ademo Sun Babatinda Biodon is a Nigerian based serial entrepreneur and visionary leader whose many years of hard work has culminated into his strategic positioning and growth as a building developer, real estate consultant, as well as a haulage and logistics expert. He is the founder of High Max Plus Real Estate, an internationally recognized company founded in 2021. And the company is a testament to the power of education, hard work, and an entrepreneurial spirit. His journey from humble beginnings to becoming a successful entrepreneur and mentor is an inspiring story of dedication and perseverance. He joins me now to discuss further on the show. Many thanks for joining me about Indian Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much. It is indeed my pleasure. Right now, we're looking at our securing property, genuine ones, so that you don't get scammed and at the end of the day, you don't have issues in future. So are there critical steps to be considered when one intends to get a property? Okay. Thank you very much. You know, when it comes to property in Nigeria, especially in Lagos State, there are so many things you actually need to do. You know, first of all, before you purchase any property, you have to do your own personal findings. The reason is that, you know, a lot of people hide under the big company name. You know, that company is big. This company is big. For the fact that the company is showing you a particular document, you also need to engage a surveyor. Is that document belong to this particular land? You also need to engage your lawyer to help you to confirm if it's something you can go ahead or you need to, you need to know the you need to know where you want to put your money. Mm. So it's very, very important that you do your own due diligence. Okay, speaking of due, uh, doing due diligence, uh, for instance, uh, uh, an intending uh, investor, for uh, for instance, uh, does he need to do a search on the property or does he really need to uh, get um, the help of an expert to run a check or just how does it really work? Well, the fact remains that you cannot do it by yourself because that is not your field. You need to engage a surveyor to help you to, you know, when you are buying a property, they, act, they will definitely show you one particular document. So how do you know that the document they are giving to you become, belongs to a particular land? Mm. So you need to engage a surveyor to help you to pick a coordinate. So your lawyer will take the coordinates to Secretary Hatalawosa to confirm if it's something they can buy. You know, when people want to buy property, they say, okay, I want CFO. Even CFO has expiry dates. Mm. Oh, CFO is on That's a priority date. date. CFO is on 99 years. So you okay. need to know how many years oh, have wow. been used, how many years remain, so that you can, you, 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 you know that, okay, even if I'm going for this particular property, I only have 44 years left or 55 years left. So you need to be aware of what you are buying. So invariably now, you're saying that uh, CFOs um, have an um, expiry date and uh, for instance, uh, let's say the family uh, is a family land and they've been using it for, let's say, about um, 50 years over time. And uh, what if it expires? What does one need to do since you've actually getting, uh, gotten ownership of such property? That's what I said. You need to be aware. Mm. When your CO4 is expired, there's a way you can renew it. But if you are not aware, government might just come one day that that particular land has been given to somebody else. Mm. You know because after that nine year, 99 years, the property go back to the government. So it's not yours, uh, it's, it's definitively. Not, it's, once you have, to, if you check your CFO, you'll see that, that this particular, you are listening the land from the government for 99 years or oh, 100 wow. years. Okay. So you need to be aware that, okay, the property that I'm getting from, so, from Mr. A, how many years remain? 50 oh. years. So that you prepare, if you are still alive there or your children is taking over, that, okay, in the next so years, we have to renew this document. Yeah, let me just um, butt in from that um, uh, point. Uh, you talked about renewal. So invariably, when a CFO expires, you can go back to the government to uh, renew it. Does it take a rigorous process since you originally owned the property? Uh, yes, yes. If you want to renew, it's, you know, there are some documents that you need to also look, look for. Are you, are you paying your land in? There's a, there's a land uh, deal that is supposed to be paid land, every year. Land user. Land, land user. So mm. you check all those documents mm. uh, before they can renew the property. Okay. So it's not something that you just do immediately. 
Okay. So you need to carry your lawyer along to be able to have it. To mm. One one prominent uh, occurrence that we see specifically in Lagos or most western part of the country is the issue of. Uh, uh, or moniles and then family family lands because over time someone goes to acquire a property and he meets maybe an elder or a family member and uh, and they say that I'm the head of the family and I've gotten um, I have all the rights to sell this to you then over time you may have uh, done your payment and then the issue of um, uh, he's not the one that is um, authorized to sell this property coming so how do you handle the issue of Omoniles and land grabbing, which is like a, um, a common feature in um, real estate in um, Lagos specifically. You know, that's why I said it's not something you can do by yourself. You know, when you engage your lawyer, those are the things that they will do. Hmm. Sometimes when you said uh, this land belongs to a uh, so -so -so family, that family, they might also have extended family. The uh, owner or the, um, the um, uh, family leader might have like three or four wives. Mm -hmm. So this one, they say, I'm the head of the family for family, I'm the head of the family for the... And both of them carry the same surname. Mm -hmm. So those are the things the lawyer will find out, okay, how many head of the family people have there? Who, who they, they will also need to carry, if possible, they will carry the ballet or mm -hmm. the king of that community. So it's not something you can do by yourself. It's something that you need to engage lawyer, you need to engage the surveyor. All right, Tom, but today, the next question would be, how does one protect um, himself from uh, property developers who always claim to have um, all the requisite uh, requirements and people actually buy, patronize and get uh, landed properties or even get outright property? And over time, they found out that um, those properties are not actually approved or they didn't really get some um, due diligence from the government. How does an investor protect himself? Uh, thank you very much. You know, legal state has really helped us with a lot of... Uh, information so before you pay for any property there's a way you can take the document the, co the copy of the document and go to allow to come there's a certain number of months and uh, amount of money that you pay for you to get the research on that particular property or anyone property. can go by himself Anywhere can, you can go by yourself okay. you can send your lawyer mm. no, recently i actually want to buy a mini estate inside an estate yes and the document the document they gave to me is co4 mm. but after uh, taking the document to allow us to confirm, I discovered that truly the document is sealed for, but they are having an issue with the community mm. and the case is already at the court. Mm. So, in a situation where I pay for that property and the community don't allow me to develop, I was mm. but it's sealed for. So, that is why you need to do your own findings. Right? So, so, invariably, you have to, an investor um, has to look out for uh, landed properties that actually are uh, into litigation, really. So that way you'll not be paying and not even have um, the right to come build on. Yes. What about if you're actually buying a plot from uh, a supposed estate managed by a property developer? Is it a CFO that, that will be given to you or what properties would you, uh, what document would be given to you to ensure, to show that uh, you have ownership to that particular allotment? If you are buying a property, you need to request for air, all the documents they have concerning that property. Mm. From their survey to the CFO, if they say they have a decision, you have for the copy of the But I'm decision. sure if they have CFO, they have CFO to cover the entire estate, not yes. for a lot of yes. um, lands. But even after having the CFO, you can see your own personal concept okay. for a particular portion. Mm. So it is not enough. After asking for the CFO, you have all the documents, you get a copy and also take it to allow us to mm. confirm. Because a lot of them, they will just maybe you know we have different different departments in Alausa too mm. you understand but when and when you want to do a project you actually need to do approval but because they don't want to go uh, with a uh, normal processes they'll be looking for a way to buy court or those things mm. so you need to confirm that okay the document they actually give to you belongs to that particular land and the house that you want to pay for as a genuine approval okay you've, you've done your due diligence you've gotten approval and uh, you've done your searches at um, the, the state government uh, the land bureau or whichever department that handles that and uh, you've gotten acquisition and you are not ready to build your property so how do you go about securing it you know how we how we advise anybody you know in legal, if even if you check the cell phone you have, they give you, there's a particular year that they give you to develop your property. Okay. So you cannot just abandon your property. Even if you are not ready to build that, you can just put a mini flat. But when you are in a developer estate, they manage your property for you. 
Mm. The developer is still the managing property for you. Mm. And you know, we have the different, different type of property. So it depends on the kind of property you are buying. Okay. All right. So you buy from a developer estate and then they manage all of that for you. But what if it is your own property and you are not building in the next six months? What steps can you do to secure yourself? If you are not building in the next six months? Yes. What step do you need to secure yourself? Uh, yes, uh, to show that there will be no encroachment on your land. You can put a dual fence on it. You can just to make sure that the, the property is secure. But oh. I believe that as an estate, they will also have general security. Mm. Because as an estate, and you, you are paying for that, maybe monthly oh. service charge. All right, it is still a business inside some Plus TV Africa. We're looking at real estate development, how you can actually secure to get in and genuine um, properties. In a moment, uh, we'll be back. We we'll still have our guests with us. Don't go away. Welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We're looking at real estate development on the show today. And my guest is Babatunde Ademuso. We're looking at how to secure your investment and ensure that you don't get scammed. So, Babatunde, let's continue from where we stopped. Uh, looking at all of this, now I still want us to go back to what happened um, uh, in the Gota area of Lagos, where some people claim that they bought their properties genuinely. How could they have been? How could they have done it better so they don't end up the way they did right now, and that they don't end up crying? Okay, thank you very much. You know, a lot of people are thinking that man, when I'm buying a house, I don't need to do any investigation because every document has already been secured. But you still need to do your due diligence because the reason is that a lot of developers are looking for a way to cut cost. So instead of them to do the right thing, they will look for a way to buy one person or the other to help them to get the approval for them to seek, to build on a particular place. But the fact remains that that particular person is not, not, not going to stay in the office forever. Mm. So when another person, another people come in, they would you will discover that that place is not the place that is supposed to put building. It's not supposed to be there, maybe canal or whatever. Mm. So that is why you need to do your own due diligence. So I shall know that okay. This is the part type of the building that's supposed to be to be here. You know, in some area you are not supposed to do more than a story building. Mm -hmm. In some area you are not supposed to do more than bungalow. Mm -hmm. And in a place you're supposed to put bungalow, you're not put put a two story or three story building. Mm -hmm. there. So those are the things you need to check. Mm -hmm. There are some area that is meant for commercial area okay. where it's supposed to be supermarket and you are putting building there. Mm -hmm. There are some area that is that's an approved layout. Mm -hmm. What's supposed to be there is hospital. You are putting school there. Okay, so is that why sometimes uh, you see buildings in Lagos and they claim to have approval from government and next you see the Lagos State Building Control Agency will come in with their big red X? Yes, the reason is that, you know, when you have a particular, when there, maybe there's a particular community or particular instance, there are so many things that are supposed to be there. Hmm. Those people, they are going to have supermarkets, they will have a recreation center or whatever. So sometimes because the developer wants to make money, where they're supposed to put a, a, a maybe a hospital or where they're supposed to put supermarkets, they will start putting building there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not maybe because the land is not good, but what you, is inside the approval, that is exactly what you're supposed to put there. Mm -hmm. So and there's some when you do your uh, sand search, there's some area that it can't the land cannot take more than two or three story building. Mm. So like, but because like the land is test. expensive, mm. so it is. Mm. So you actually want to put like ten story building there. Oh, wow. So those are the things we need to check before we pay for any building. It's not mm. only land, mm. any property that you want to buy because this is your hard hand money. So mm. you need to have actually do your your research very well. Okay, as we round off from um, this discussion right now. Uh, there are lots of uh, building developers, not just in Lagos, across uh, the country. And over time, they tell people that you can actually be um, a landowner in uh, five years by making uh, maybe installments, uh, making payment by installment, and uh, maybe doing an outright payment once, then spread the rest uh, for the next um, five years. There are lots of them, and lots of people are incredible. But we've heard people uh, who say that um, they've had to deal with unscrupulous uh, you know, developers how, for instance, uh, how what would you advise someone who is out to make such payments and um, uh, he feels that um, uh, he's going to be a landowner in five years, uh, only for him to come back after some time, you find that, that some things uh, just went all right? You know, I'll say before, uh, land is not toothpaste. 
Yes, that you can say, okay, somebody do an advert for me online and I just want to pay. You need to check the property. You know, have knowledge of what you are paying for is very, very important. Mm. Because sometimes, you know, when it comes to land that they do document in legal states, they are not cheap. Mm. And you will know whether if you want to do land banking, you should know that the, the land you are paying for is not going to be inside the community. Mm. So you need to check, is it water locked? Is it mixed land? You know, not that the, the, the problem majority of them are having is because the land is waterlogged. Mm. They need to create access road for them to be able to allocate you. Mm -hmm. What if for the government to come and do the road before they can allocate? Ah, you've paid for five years. Government is not coming to that place yet. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, not, it's not all of them that doesn't have land. Majority of them have land, but they cannot allocate you now yes. because the land is waterlogged. Mm -hmm. So you need to have an idea of what you are buying. Okay. The thing is that if you already know that it's a mixed land, it's mm -hmm. waterlogged, you know that, okay, before I can be able to get access to my land will be the next 10 years. Mm. So even if you are not in Nigeria, you are in Nigeria, you should have somebody that can help you to check, check you. and send the pictures. Well, thank you so, so much. Uh, I mean, there's a whole lot uh, that one needs to consider when one wants to acquire um, ownership of uh, land and properties. And so I'm sure Nigerians have learned one or two things. We must say a very big thank you to you, uh, Mr. Thank Babatunde you Ademoso, for sharing all of this useful insight with us on the show today. You're welcome. All right. Just before we go, Nigerians and indeed Africans have been encouraged to harness and promote tailor-made solutions to cater to indigenous demands. This advice was given on the sidelines of a graduation ceremony for Nigerians who underwent training on semiconductor design by Cheap Lab. Uh, let's take details of that report. I'll see you again next time. My name is Justin Akadoni. Many thanks for being a part of the show. <laughs> The semiconductor technology stands as a cornerstone for modern economies, and as such, investing in this domain could unlock substantial foreign exchange earnings through localized processing of raw materials and export of semiconductor products. Ola Fadinro and Yen Choi are two visionaries who have pledged to redefine the landscape of technology in Africa, and by extension, the world. With the cheap lab cohorts, they have trained young Nigerians on chip design. On the sidelines of the graduation, they speak more about their drive. So um, what we're doing is essentially bringing Nigeria and Africa to the table to build the AI uh, custom chips. And so it could be used to solve, we could create our own uh, Nigerian chat GPT, for example, or different kind of applications. But there's also a huge amount of software developers who are having a hard time making a living. So in the chip development world, there's a huge global shortage of qualified skill and and the earning potential for that is massive for example our graduates uh, we're targeting that they'll be making 10x 10 times what a normal start graduate salary would be and that's life-changing chairman of the nigerians in diaspora commission abike daber erewa is here to show the federal government's support she gives insight on the enormous potentials Nigerians, both home and abroad, possess, as well as what this feat means for the country. Nigeria will be exporting microchips to other parts of Africa. So we, we should support and encourage young Nigerians like this that are talented and they're all over the world. So that's why we're here. And um, I believe in him. I believe in the young generation of Nigerians, both at home and in the diaspora. What we need to do is encourage them. No doubt, this venture has the potential to stimulate job creation, elevate local content development for the international community, and also bolster a more resilient economic environment. They're looking to keep that talent here in Nigeria. That's kind of the intent behind the idea. And so I think by keeping uh, the talent here in Nigeria um, will allow for any number of issues to to be uh, looked at, considered, and ideally solved. Uh, we want Africa to be the forefront in building chips in this part of the world, and we want Nigeria to be the country leading that thing, leading it. So that's the reason why we decided, okay, let's start something that has to do with chip design. And also we want women, at least 60% of women, to be part of this movement. Because if you know very well, uh, women pay um, more attention to details because designing chips involves details. In all, the idea is providing a solution to the global skills shortage as graduates of the academy would work with top microchips and semiconductor industries in the world.